Hello there friends and strangers and welcome to my August favourites. This month has just flown by, especially because I've started at my new job, it's going very well, thanks for asking, and it's kept me really busy. And as a result, I don't have a lot of stuff to talk about this month, but I have a lot of things to say about these products, so let's get started. Now, if any of you have been on the internet for the past couple of years, you'll know that just about every beauty blogger on the internet goes on and on about the wonders of coconut oil, and I've jumped on that bandwagon. I found this massive tub in Superdrug, it was half price and going for about £4, so I picked it up, and a little goes a long way, so I'm going to be using this for a very long time. People love coconut oil because it is one of those great multitasking products that you can use for a variety of things, and not just cooking. You can use it as a hair mask or a leave-in conditioner. You can use it instead of shaving cream. You can use it as a body lotion. You can put it on the sides of your fingers when you're painting your nails so you don't get nail varnish everywhere. Is there anything this can't do? Personally, I've been using it as a hair mask and now my hair feels so soft. I've also been using it as a moisturiser and as you guys know, I get a bit of redness around my nose. But since I've been using this, that redness is just gone. It's history. Bye bye. So yeah, if you were like me and you haven't tried coconut oil yet, go out and get some. Another thing that has seen huge popularity on the internet is the idea of putting fruit and vegetables in your water. And once again, I've jumped on that bandwagon. Seriously, I need to stop jumping on bandwagons, that is a very dangerous habit. I've got here a filter bottle and in my water right now I have some lemon and some cucumber. And while I don't think that adding fruit and vegetables to your water makes it necessarily any healthier for your body, because let's face it, it doesn't get any healthier than water, it does make a huge difference to the taste and it encourages you to drink more water, which is always a good thing. Seriously, as someone who's tried to up their water intake for the past couple of years, nothing has worked as well as this. Next, let's talk about TV. One of the first things I did when I found out that I had a job was get a Netflix account. I know what you're thinking, Katie, how has it taken you this long to get Netflix? Well, up until now, I've been an unemployed, broke student. Ain't nobody got $5.99 a month for Netflix? But now I do, and it's great. And oh my god, there is so much to watch. I didn't know where to begin, but in the end, I settled for Orange is the New Black, and I don't regret it one bit. And I'm hooked, I've watched like two seasons in the space of two days. What can I say? I've been missing out for so long, I have so much to catch up on. If you guys have any suggestions as to what else I should be watching on Netflix, let me know down in the comments below. And I will eventually get round to it. Next, let's talk about books. Why am I doing this? You all know what a book looks like. As we all know, Harry Potter and the Cursed Child has finally had its script released, giving millions of fans who can't afford to go and see the play in London the chance to nevertheless catch up with Harry and the gang. Some people complained on the internet about the fact that it's in script form. Like, even though JK Rowling said, this is not a book, this is a script, I didn't even write it. People still thought they were actually getting, like, a novel. What the hell? I didn't know it was a book! This is a waste of money! How am I supposed to read this? It says it's a script on the front cover! How did you not notice that? Personally, coming from a dramatic background, and by that I don't mean my childhood was very dramatic, I mean I've had experience of reading scripts and acting, I had absolutely no trouble whatsoever with reading it in script form. And okay, in my opinion, the story wasn't amazing. I'm not going to give any spoilers away, but let's just say that I've seen this plot a thousand times on fanfiction.net. It wasn't really anything new or inspiring. But nonetheless, I am a huge Harry Potter fan, so of course I loved it. But now JK Rowling says that she is totally done with Harry Potter and I am devastated because I need more! And last but not least, let's talk about movies. Now I'm not sure whether to call this a favourite or not, but it's the only movie that I saw this month, so I have to talk about Suicide Squad. And oh my god, I have so much to say about this movie. Most of the opinions that I have regarding this movie can be seen in Jack Howard's video in which he talks about it in more detail. So if you want to know how I felt about the movie, go watch his video. However, that's all of the negative stuff. This is a favourites video, so I'm going to talk about the positives. I feel like I went into the movie with two perspectives. One which was a critic and that part of me agreed with the reviews. And the other part of me which was a huge DC fan and that part of me really enjoyed the movie. And that's all that matters in the end, right? I thought the casting was very good and yeah, 
I don't regret going to see it. I think the trouble was with this movie, they had so many characters, so many backstories, there was just too much. And then when they realised that they had too much, they ended up cutting out a large part of the movie, and in the process, they just lost the plot a little bit. But do I think you should see this movie if you want to? Yes! Go and see it for yourself and form your own opinion. I mean, heck, I had someone tell me a couple of weeks ago that they thought Jared Leto was just a carbon copy of Heath Ledger's Joker, but then they told me that they hadn't even seen the movie. And then they went on to tell me that they knew absolutely nothing about all the other Jokers that the DC Universe has produced. So where they came up with that argument, I have no idea. Someone else said that he was copying Heath Ledger because he was method acting just like Heath Ledger was. And I was like, um, you do know that method acting wasn't created by Heath Ledger, right? It's actually a well-known technique used by many actors and actresses throughout the course of history. And okay, maybe Jared Leto took it too far. I mean, apparently he sent anal beads, used condoms, dead pigs and live rats to his fellow cast members. But method acting is nothing new, okay? But I thought Jared Leto did a good job. The only trouble was, most of his scenes were cut from the movie, so you didn't really get to see a lot of him. That was actually one of the big troubles I had with this movie. In the trailers for it, you saw so many different scenes, and when you went to the movie, you were expecting to see those scenes, but they were cut out at the last second. Don't put things in the trailer unless you're actually gonna show them. All right then, friends and strangers, those were my August favorites. Let me know down in the comments below what you've been enjoying the past couple of weeks, and I will see you next time. Bye!